Kia ora tātou, tia tahi ka mihi atu ki teo ki tō tātou Matua Nui te rani, nā nei tīmata, nā nei tango nā mea katoa nō reira whakakororia ki tōna ingo i nā wā katoa. Ka hoki mai ahau ki o tātou tini mate, nā mate huhua te wā, e mui rā, e mui rā, e mui rā. Kai te mihi atu ahau, Kia tātou te hona ora, ko tātou e nei, ka nui te mihi ki a tātou i te niwa. Ko hau nei nā, te tei uri nō mā tātua waka, ko tūhoi, ko te whakatohea, ko Ngāti Awa o Kuiwi. Enare, te tei anō taha, nō Ngāti Kaungunu ki te wairoa, ko Jason Mika hau. Kia ora tātou, it's a pleasure to be here and really... Uh, you know, honoured really to be invited to have a bit of a kōrero uh, about some research, some ranahau that we've done. Uh, I'm very pleased to have made it here. I got over the hills uh, just this afternoon and uh, caught uh, the previous presentation. I've got to listen to that all day uh, about the pātuna and uh, paika. It's awesome, awesome kōrero. Um, uh, my uh, mahi is really around uh, Māori business, so uh, sort of... Um, really interested in uh, Māori entrepreneurship, Māori enterprises and how they work and why they work and why they do what they do and how we can support them to, to do what they do. Uh, and in this particular research, this that I know, we've had the opportunity to, to look at uh, Māori enterprises uh, that have a relationship with the moana and operate on the moana. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our research and what our research team uh, uh, got up to and uh, what we found, what we learned uh, uh, from that uh, ranaho. Um, so, our project is called Indigenizing the Blue Economy. Its number is Project 2.3. So, if you're ever searching for, oh, well, which project is that amongst the, the thousands of projects that the Sustainable Seas has funded? Ours is number 2.3. I didn't like numbers, but I had to stick with it when I saw how many there was. Uh, so that is our project. So what I want to cover in the next 20 minutes is basically uh, talk about where this Hidanaho came from. It came from phase one in the, uh, in the challenge research. Uh, so I'll just talk briefly about that. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, some analysis we did between phase one and phase two to figure out what does phase two look like for us in our ranahau. Uh, then I'm going to talk briefly about the ranahau that we actually did around indigenizing the blue economy and some case study research that we did. And then lastly, talk about uh, what does this all mean uh, for the challenge for our Māori enterprises uh, and the marine economy uh, and also others that may be interested in this area of work. So first up is um, in phase one, um, we were lucky enough to be invited to, um, to do some research to understand what is the Māori marine economy. How do we understand what that looks like, how big it is, what it does, who's in it, and uh, what is their relationship to Tangaroa. And so at that project was called uh, Whai Rawa, Whai Mana, Whai Oranga. And so what we wanted to do there is to basically define the Māori marine economy based on uh, Māori knowledge, uh, Māori worldview, uh, tikanga, and traditional practices, but also uh, contemporary Māori enterprises, what they were doing in relation to the moana. And from that uh, ranahau, it was a sort of a case study based research, but also looking at what, what does the literature say. And we produced from that a uh, literature review. So if you're into reading all of the literature on that, there's a huge book, uh, you know, associated with that literature that talks about that. But there's also three other reports that we produced just to capture the whakaaro uh, from that uh, ranahau. One is uh, called Mapping the Māori Marine Economy. And what we really, basically, if you want to understand, well, sort of, what's, 
how do we quantify the Māori marine economy? The best data that we've got is fishing data. And so the Māori marine economy, for us, we sort of tended to concentrate on that in terms of quota uh, and catch entitlement uh, and the assets that our iwi hold uh, in the fishing industry. So that was mapping the Māori marine economy. Another one we looked at is uh, Māori marine enterprises and how they conduct uh, business on the moana in a kaitiaki-centred way. So how are they being good kaitiaki of the moana, their whānau, the moana, uh, whenua, and all those sorts of elements in the way in which they conduct business. And we did some case study research with organisations like Iwi Collective Partnership, Moana New Zealand, and uh, a couple of whānau scale enterprises, as well as some larger ones down south. Uh, and then the... Um, and then we kind of summed it up in terms of, uh, you know, defining it uh, in terms of the Māori marine economy as a sort of overall paper. So all this stuff is on the challenge website, uh, so you'll be able to uh, look it up at your leisure. We had a bit of a warning around, um, you know, defining the Māori marine economy uh, for a couple of days, trying to figure out, well, what's our definition of that? And ultimately we landed on uh, whai rawa, whai mana, whai oranga, you know, the title of the project. You know, the pursuit of well-being, of uh, the ability to express your mana and apply your mana in that space, and also uh, to develop the resources that you have as a whānau, hapu or iwi. Uh, so we, we started out with that, uh, that Māori marine economy in phase one, then uh, the challenge invited us back uh, to think about, well, what would phase two look like if you continued on with that uh, rangahau? And so um, we, we needed to do a bit more kōrero uh, with some of the Māori marine enterprises, some of the whānau, uh, and take another look at the literature in terms of what it says about what are the main challenges for the Māori marine economy. And so uh, John Reid and uh, Matt Rout did some work on, on that and it's you know it's summarized in this report called a pistol analysis basically what's the political economic social technological legal environmental challenges facing the Māori marine economy and um, amongst all of the possibilities there we uh, highlighted three one is fragmentation fragmentation of our assets our resources uh, the structures that we uh, use to operate Māori marine enterprises and the governance and institutions by which they are uh, sort of governed and, and uh, in that area. The second key challenge was a focus on commodities rather than sort of thinking about or high value, high quality products and services within the Māori marine economy. It was tended to be focused on you know, catching fish and selling fish uh, as a sort of a commodity rather than thinking about the value that we add, that we have within the Māori marine economy. The third challenge is the imbalance between hapu and whānau and iwi uh, to be able to participate and benefit from the Māori marine economy. So uh, with treaty settlements, particularly the fishery settlements, those assets have been vested in iwi. Uh, yet it was the, at the whānau scale where whānau uh, were involved in fishing and looking after their whānau and feeding whānau. Uh, so we, we could see there's a bit of a tension there between the capacity of the iwi and the aspirations of whānau to get involved in the business and activity of fishing and how do we sort of address that sort of issue there, that imbalance. Uh, so taking into account those uh, sort of three main challenges or constraints on the Māori marine economy, we devised a, a sort of a, a proposal to do some more research. And what we called it is uh, indigenising the blue economy. Initially our research was uh, under the Tangaroa Research Programme, which was the sort of Māori focused research area of the challenge. And this project would be sort of sit right inside the blue economy research stream in terms of alongside the others that were that were chosen for that area of research. So what was our purpose? What was the purpose of our research? 
essentially our, our focus was to partner with Māori, uh, whether that's pan-tribal, tribal or whānau scale enterprises, and support Māori who aspire to a blue economy imbued with mātauranga Māori, so all of our knowledge uh, of who we are and where we come from and how we operate in the world. Treaty principles, so Treaty of Waitangi was a key element and a focus on Māori well-being, human potential and our relationship with Tangaroa. So that's kind of what we were looking for, to understand well, what does that look like for our Māori marine enterprises at different scales and different sectors and contexts. Uh, this is the, our project team. Uh, I thought the first project team was big, this got even bigger. And when you're managing a project team, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Because uh, you've got lots of personalities and aspirations and wants and needs. And you've got basically a fraction of everyone's time and you have to make sure you get your fraction. And so here's all our fractional bits of our team that I, you know, managed to, we managed to uh, assemble our team. Uh, so some of the researchers are researchers based at uh, universities, some of them are private, uh, run their own sort of research consultancies, and some of them are iwi researchers, so with whānau and hapu and iwi uh, organisations. So the way we wanted to approach it is basically have a core team of researchers, but essentially is to partner with whānau researchers or iwi researchers uh, to be able to conduct the research together as a partnership rather than you know the academics sort of leading the charge writing the reports and producing outputs is actually to find a way for us to do that in partnership with these Māori organizations uh, the, the the research was focused around three main themes um, so um, the first one there is uh, Pai heko heko, uh, increasing integration. So this responds to that uh, problem of fragmentation of the resource, the, the Māori marine resources, particularly the fisheries assets, settlement assets. Uh, so how do we, uh, you know, sort of increase the level of integration amongst Māori marine enterprises? Uh, one of the other themes there, the, the second one there, awahatana. Uh, so the idea of innovation differentiation. So how do, you, how do you tell the difference between a Māori ika and a non-Māori ika or anybody else's ika for that matter? So how do we differentiate uh, our products, our services uh, in a way that demonstrates the value that uh, sits within those, those things? So we needed to think about that. And then whakatautika, the idea of sort of balance between iwi and whānau in particular uh, and how we uh, get the two working together and supportive of one another and what they're doing in the Māori marine economy. So just a bit more, kia ora, uh, Just a bit more on pae heko heko, increasing integration. So, you know, these are the questions that, uh, you know, come out of our research proposal, but how can Māori lead multi-generation integrated planning? This sounds like an academic integrated planning across economic sectors in their marine jurisdictions to maintain te Māori o Ngā katoa. So, oh well, that's the challenge there that we sort of set ourselves. And then this one, how can the efficiency of quota distribution be improved? So it's speaking directly to the assets uh, that are associated with uh, the Māori marine economy. Awa hatana, generating differentiation. How can Māori differentiate their products and diversify their activity? in the Māori marine economy uh, and uh, you know not just about catching fish but all sorts of other uh, dimensions of the blue economy. Whakatautika question there was how do we create employment, enterprises, uh, economic opportunities for whānau and hapu and coastal communities leveraging the assets of our iwi organisations. Uh, research, you know, eventually it comes with the outputs, got to produce the outputs, got to get paid, so you got to, you know, the outputs are essential, so here's some of the outputs. Uh, literature review, that's a picture of the literature review there, 
It'll be back up on the Challenge website uh, very soon. Five case study reports, they're done. We're just getting them sort of uh, tidied up, ready for publication. And then a synthesis report. A big part of the challenge is to make sense of all of the research. And uh, within our little project, that was a key priority for us. So we had uh, a team within the team whose job it was to try to make sense of all of the research and come up with some answers about what it all meant. A uh, bit of a slide deck, so Farno can actually use those slides and adapt them to be able to explain the Ranaho that we conducted with them uh, to their Farno. Academic papers, academics got to produce papers, produce three papers, two, two, one's published, the other one's just about there, and the other one's under review, and then some, uh, you know, some explanations about what these uh, articles are all about. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly talk about how much time we got. Ten minutes. I got ten minutes, so I'm just briefly going <laughs> to. I'm just going to briefly talk about the case studies. So there were five uh, case studies that we conducted. Um, Georgia McClellan from Fakatoe, um, she led this uh, uh, case study with Iwi Collective Partnership. Now Iwi Collective Partnership is a is a Māori organisation. Uh, that comprises 19 iwi members who have decided to uh, collectively trade their annual catch entitlement as a block uh, to be able to leverage uh, the strength of their collective assets and, and get a good deal for the iwi. Uh, one of the things that they become interested in is this idea of um, how can uh, tikanga Māori be a, a more active part uh, of what they do as an organisation, as I ICP, but also uh, the uh, companies that catch fish, process fish on their behalf. How can they ensure that tikanga Māori uh, is being understood and applied and adhered to in whether you're catching fish, processing it or marketing or selling it? So they wanted to understand that. So they went to the challenge, ICP went to the challenge and said, we've got an idea. We want to explore tikanga. And so the challenge resource that uh, research, and it's called Kia Tika Tahika. Mari has already covered it, so I won't cover it now. But anyway, our part of this uh, project was to understand well, how do you implement that? So once you've decided, how do you implement that? What are the pathways and considerations there? And some of the findings, um, uh, tikanga must be sourced and, and, and implemented locally. Uh, so that comes to the question of can you, can you have a sort of a national set of standards uh, and to, consistent with tikanga, you know, that the industry could follow? Big question for Muddy to figure out there. Uh, research must be transformational. So ICP was interested in doing research that would transform not just do what they were doing in the Māori marine economy, but be transformative. Uh, partners must be supported to apply tikanga. So if you're catching fish, processing fish, they need to be supported to understand what tikanga means. Uh, tohuna and scientists must be involved in developing uh, you know, the tikanga and how it's implemented and applied. So uh, that was the sort of uh, the ICP one. The Onuku Runanga down Akaroa Harbour in the South Island, uh, they bought interest in a salmon farm. And uh, so they were thinking, well, we're going to make some money here, this salmon farm. And so who wants to buy salmon and who's the best customers for the salmon? So they were thinking a very sort of a commercial uh, focus for their business. And so um, one of our uh, research uh, team members, Dr. J, uh, did some research on well, who wants this stuff and who's prepared to pay the most for it. Turned out uh, Korea and Thailand uh, were, you know, potential markets for the salmon. Um, it was already going to the US, but there were particular people in the US who were really keen on the salmon and they'd pay the most for it. Um, 
it was also, uh, you know, we needed to diversify our markets in terms of this particular business uh, to be able to manage risk, but also uh, identifying different areas of price premium. So it was a very sort of commercially oriented quantitative uh, research study. But what it did do is open the eyes of the, you know, the, the Rulanga and the, um, to the thought of, oh, well, actually, let's look at Akaroa Harbour as a whole and the governance arrangements around space and water and for them to assert their rights and interests in that space and become more involved in the governance of that space. And so that sort of took them down, you know, the governance path as opposed to the economic path, but they interrelated. Uh, the third case study here, so we had two uh, case studies uh, at the Chathams, Chatham Islands, uh, one with uh, Moriori people and one with uh, Ngāti Mutuna or Whare Kauri. And so we had two researchers, one doing each case study. Uh, initially it was going to be together but we discovered, no, no, better to do them separate and uh, each one have their own research. And so this one, uh, the goal is really around how do they develop their Māori marine, well, their Moriori marine economy uh, while protecting their, their miheke or taonga uh, of the marine environment. Now this uh, research uh, involved Deb Gooms, who is um, Moriori, but she's also Nazi Mutsuna or Whare uh, working with Anne-Marie Gillies. Uh, for them, what was important is Moriori self-determination and uh, for that to be an enduring principle of who they are uh, and their presence on the islands, uh, but also uh, revitalising their knowledge, their traditional knowledge and culture and history, uh, revitalising their involvement of whānau who are involved in fishing, and also engaging into, into two minutes. So here, yeah, that's a good case study. Uh, the other one is Ngāti Mutsuna or Whare Kauri. Um, a big uh, concern for them was the institutional environment and how it was impacting on their ability to do a lot of things, including economic development and the marine economy. Uh, they were interested in studying wahi tapu on the marine environment and doing a bit of a stock take there as well. The other case study was Moana, New Zealand. And for them, uh, the focus was whakatautika, balance between a large scale iwi, pan iwi, pan tribal enterprise and whānau scale fishers. In particular, one fishing company based over here in Tauranga Moana, uh, RMD, uh, so Roger Rawlinson and his brother and their whānau run a uh, inshore fishing business here and so they are very much tied into Moana so we studied how they sort of work together there. The synthesis, uh, <coughs> basically uh, so just in summary, uh, institutions and history matters so how did we get to where we are today in terms of the Māori marine economy so understanding uh, those aspects in terms of treaty settlements and what they enable us and to do, but also what the constraints are associated with that. Uh, and also in terms of what is a, uh, you know, sort of if we're thinking about indigenising the blue economy, what does it depend on? Holistic worldview, the Māori worldview, relationships and also time, thinking about the importance of time. Beyond that, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, specific areas which sort of come out of the case study research but also our sort of thinking about uh, what are the sort of things that might matter but it's a it needs a sort of an institutional integrated response to actually make some of the stuff make some of the changes work so good idea mm. kia ora. <laughs>